We spent a lot of time examining phase transitions and phase equilibria in terms of how the molar Gibbs energy uh, looks as a function of temperature. But we also have acknowledged that it is a function of pressure as well, and we've seen some of the effects of that uh, in recent videos. Now let's take a look at what that function actually might look like as a function of pressure. So what we'll need for this is we'll need to remember that, in fact, the partial derivative of Gibbs energy with respect to pressure at constant temperature is equal to the volume. And if we make these molar quantities, we'll make that the molar volume. And uh, this also tells us because the molar volume of the vapor is greater than, quite a bit greater than, the molar vapor, uh, molar volume of the liquid, and that can be about the same as the molar volume of the solid, that we should expect to see this, this represents the slope, so we should expect to see the slopes of these two curves to be roughly comparable. It's going to depend upon which of those uh, has a greater molar volume in terms of which one is steeper. But the molar volume of the gas makes it the steepest of these three curves. And all of these are positive. So before we had graphs that looked like this where we were seeing the molar Gibbs energy sloping downward with various slope. Now we're going to see a graph that looks in the opposite direction. So what does this look like? All right, let me just draw you sort of a typical picture of what uh, one of these diagrams might look like. So now we're graphing the molar Gibbs energy as a function of pressure. All right, and in this case, at low pressures, what, what phase do we expect to see? Well, we expect to see a gas at low pressures and a solid at high pressures. So in this case, the one um, on the farthest left is going to be where the gas phase is. And then we'll see, presumably, a liquid phase and then a solid phase. So we would see our three curves now would look something like this. And um, I'll draw continuations of these here so that we can track them. But what we have here, basically, is a solid phase way out here to the right, a liquid phase here in the middle, and a vapor phase over on the far left. Uh, once again, we're seeing uh, positions of intersections between these curves. And remember, those intersections always represent cases where two of the phases, the Gibbs energies of two of those phases, are in equilibrium. So for example, uh, one intersection might be between the Gibbs, molar Gibbs energy of the vapor and the molar Gibbs energy of the liquid. So in this case, we're seeing this is the point of the phase equilibrium between the vapor and the liquid, or a condensation point or a vaporization point. So this would tell us where is, oops, sorry, the pressure at which condensation or vaporization would occur. So this is a little bit different than what we were doing before. As we projected these things down to the horizontal axis, what we were reading off was the temperature at which the phase transition would occur. Well, these curves are now being drawn at constant temperature. So at that constant temperature, what question we can ask is, at what pressure would we expect to see a phase transition? So if, let's say, I've got a substance that is at a temperature of 300 Kelvin, and I want to know, okay, at what pressure would I be able to induce a gas to condense into a liquid? Well, this is the sort of diagram that might help us learn that. Uh, if we're looking at the, the uh, transition between a liquid and a solid, the pressure at which that transition would occur might be here. So this would be the, the pressure of fusion, and this would be the pressure of um, vaporization, for example in each of these cases. So from these diagrams, we get complementary information to the other diagrams, but it just gives us a slightly different way to think about that. And I'll just remind you that in each of these curves, the slope is basically equal to the molar volume. All right, now, what else can we learn from this? Well, there are some cases where, for example, we might have um, a solid and a liquid that are inverted in the uh, order of their molar volume. So in other words, we might have the case where the molar volume of the solid is actually greater than the molar volume of the liquid. And as I've mentioned uh, earlier, this is, uh, this is actually uh, exemplified by water. So now if I draw this diagram for this, I'm still going to have a steep curve out here for uh, water in the vapor phase. But 
the next curve I'm going to have is going to show the solid. And then the last curve will be the liquid. Because the solid has a steeper, uh, has a steeper uh, slope, if you will, than the liquid. So we'll see that transition happen first. So here we have vapor to solid to liquid. Now, mind you, you need to bear in mind that this is at a constant temperature. So this, in fact, might be the case uh, of a constant temperature where we're manipulating the phases using pressure. And uh, in fact, what, uh, what can often occur in these cases is that instead of seeing that subsequent, uh, that subsequent intersection here, we see that the liquid and the solid, in fact, change roughly the same. So we would see this, and then we might see a liquid that's up here roughly parallel to the solid. And when this is the case, this is more the case that we saw with CO2, where uh, we could see a transition directly between the vapor phase and the solid phase, a sublimation. So this is a sublimation pressure but we don't see the liquid appear at all because it's running roughly parallel to the solid curve, so they don't really intersect. All right, but we can also uh, see what a triple point might look like on a diagram like this. And let's see what that might resemble. So once again, we'll draw a steep vapor phase curve over here on the left-hand side. But then when we get up uh, to the pressure of the triple point, so this will be the triple point pressure. And I should mention that the constant temperature is the triple point temperature in this case. Otherwise, we won't be able to see this phenomenon. All right, what we typically find is that the solid is going to have a less of a steep slope than the liquid. So it actually appears as the lower curve. But the liquid branches off from this same point. And here is the vapor down here. So in this particular case, we still have a triple point, And that triple point indicates for us the pressure of the triple point, with the temperature of this whole diagram being the temperature of the triple point. But you can see that the structure, the shape of this triple point, is a little different than the shape that we had seen before when we graphed all of the, the, the molar Gibbs energy versus temperature. In this case, we have a very different looking graph but it's also characterized by having all three of these curves intersect at the same point. So again, our triple point indicates where all three phases are in equilibrium with one another, and they all share a common point, which means that the Gibbs energy of the, of the vapor at this pressure and the Gibbs energy of the liquid at this pressure, the liquid, and the Gibbs energy of the solid at this pressure are all equal to one another and therefore coexisting.